All right, guys, welcome back to Formula One News. And with the Miami Grand Prix fast approaching, some interesting rumors coming out of the panic that Fernando Alonso might be replacing Sebastian Vettel in the seat on Aston Martin next year. That would definitely cause a lot of chaos in the grid, no doubt about it. And also, Mercedes talking up the confirmations that they're bringing some upgrades to this weekend to try and find the solution to their porpoising problems. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new, as always. This is honestly the pretty beautiful setting for this weekend's race. We'll look at the track as well, as has been confirmed kind of, um, over the last few hours here, just to make sure this is fully on screen pretty much this is sector one this is the start finish straight you've got a drs section here as well i'm really intrigued to see how this track will play out i really don't know like um how it's going to go to be honest because there's um all sorts of possibilities here for drs like overtakes and re-overtakes like let's say for example you go through sector one you're within a second at this detection zone you get the pretty big drs straight down the back of sector two then you have this pretty tricky section where with the old cars you'd probably very much struggle to follow here so the old cars would probably have had the detection zone before the final corner now they're doing it after the final corner, kind of like what we saw in Saudi Arabia, for example, right? Where the detection zone was before the corner, so that you kind of got those cat and mouse games. That's not going to be the case here, just better to get through the corner as quick as you possibly can, to get the detection zone here right at the start of sector three, and then a 1.2 or 1.3 kilometer straight here down the back of the track. So this is an immensely long straight. Like, if the Mercedes can't like deal with their issues this weekend, they are going to be belted up to space and back, to be honest, along this one. It's going to be a rough time. Like, an incredibly long straight. The DRS is for a significant portion of it as well, kind of shown here by the green lines. So, like, a it's interesting, really. If you overtake, like, let's say you get past someone on, um, you know, going into this straight, for example, going into turn 17, will they get you back on the main straight with this DRS section? Or maybe you don't want to overtake someone into turn 11 because then after this kind of tricky section, if they stay within a second, they're going to get you back on the straight. So I don't know how this is going to play out. Like, um, a really interesting mix of, well, long straights, but also tricky corners and some slower sections and medium corners. I really kind of like the look how this might play out. The track setting is beautiful itself, and um, it's really tough to call how racing is going to go this weekend. So definitely intrigued to be perspective on it, but um, yeah, the triple DRS zones could create a lot of overtaking potential. Hopefully DRS isn't too strong. Hopefully we get some good overtaking into corners as opposed to just like just blasting past them on the straights. I guess we'll see how it plays out. This also to mention because a couple of days ago we looked at the fact that it was potentially going to rain on the Friday. Now it looks like there might be some scattered showers on the Sunday. I wouldn't bet on it at all, but um, it's a possibility that uh, we get some interesting weather this weekend, but more than likely not going to happen. I'm definitely not keeping my hopes up at this point. This also to mention because there was some talk about, well, Carlos Sainz getting a new power unit in his car for the Imola Grand Prix, of course, didn't get all that much time to use it after getting, well, kicked out of the race on the very first lap. But, um, yeah, apparently Charles Leclerc is going to have the same power unit upgrade as well for Miami. Not 100% sure. This hasn't been confirmed at all, but that's the going rumor right now. And this power unit, they believe, has extra reliability so they can kind of extract further 10, 15 horsepower from it than uh, they were able to before, which might give them the edge they might need to get back in touch with Red Bull that, um, you know, at least if they're looking how they were last weekend in Imola, are going to be a force to be reckoned with this weekend. And, of course, if Ferrari keep bouncing along the straights, those, um, you know, a kilometer plus straights that we have on this Miami circuit, the Red Bull probably should be favoured going in. We'll see how it works out though. This also from the Mercedes front, I think they've kind of confirming that yes, they've found several directions, pretty much what they've done since um, the disaster of Imola. They've gone back to the, well, the centre, they've done the wind tunnel testing. They're trying to kind of correlate, to my understanding, the um, the data they have from real life and what they've got in the simulations, which is seemingly rather different. I believe that like it's kind of implies here that they've kind of like coming relatively close to figuring out what that issue is. And of course, this is what they are saying, right? So like you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. But he says they've found several directions that being total war for improving the car and we'll be conducting experiments in Miami free practice to correlate those simulations hopefully confirm the development path so our expectation is they're going to bring some new parts to this weekend like some new aerodynamic parts try some things out and if they work then they can say okay that's the direction we want to go with our car let's like put those upgrades into the works and like get a proper package developed for Barcelona and they might try a few things out so they've certainly got a lot to work on in the practice sessions probably you know not exactly learning the track so much but actually just try to figure out whether these upgrades work so we're thinking they're probably going to bring some new things in. This kind of, um, as he determines, our learning has continued in the wind tunnel and the simulations. We have found several directions for improving the car. We'll be conducting experiments in Miami. The saying, smooth seas do not make good sailors. Quite interesting comes to mind. You won't be saying the last few years have been too easy for them to the point where they've kind of, you know, let their foot off the gas to some degree. The team has shown its resilience over many years. The difficult start of the season has lit a fire within every team member determined to put it right. Whether they will get it right, that's another question. This is also from Giuliano De Kessa kind of point that I thought was rather interesting, kind of confirming they are going to make some decisive tests. He reckons that if these tests work, they will work a lot better in Barcelona, as in either these kind of upgrades will, um, you know, fit Barcelona better than Miami, or the fact that if these tests do work and they do find some direction to improve the car and the issues that they're having, they can bring, like, further upgrades and a well, more complete package to the Barcelona Grand Prix. It's not clear why each attempt didn't produce major changes in performance. If it fails the test, the W13 will be left to its fate and will effectively just be there to provide data for the 2023 car. It's a big weekend for Mercedes. If none of these kind of directions uh, will go the way they're expecting them to, then um, there's going to be some 
serious issues for this team and they're probably not going to be a race winner this year if uh, things this weekend don't go as planned. Let's dive into kind of the, the driver potential grid changes going into next year because as Mick Schumacher says like in previous years he was kind of concerned not being in Formula 1 always watching his back and nowadays like um, yeah, it's kind of more easy more relaxed situation now that he's back in the Haas seats but this is a very interesting rumour that came out just an hour or so ago from um, well potentially from F1 Insider that Fernando Alonso might be replacing Sebastian Vettel and Aston Martin for 2023. Really interesting story. Just a few days ago we kind of heard that we thought that Alonso was going to be signing a new deal at Alpine. Now apparently that might not be the case anymore. Also it seems strange for Alonso like why would he want to go to Aston Martin when that seems to be a step backwards like um you know Vettel is going to retire or something then maybe this is an option but I think if anything this might be mainly caused by the fact that Oscar Piastri is sitting there on the bench effectively for Alpine right now trying to figure out what they want to do with him because they're thinking look we want to put this you know, F2 world champion who's had such a phenomenal like um you know run so far in his career we want to put him in a car like we kind of maybe want to lend him somewhere like loan him out to a Williams or something but um for next season to keep him warm but like um you know maybe we don't want to do that if it's kind of going to potentially cost us our relationship with him and all this type of stuff so there's definitely some concerns there and they want to give Piastri a seat and Ocon we imagine is going to stay could Alonso stay as well these are the rumors though that are coming out according to this article I'll leave a link down below the latest topic in the radio paddock is the following Fernando Alonso could replace the Heppenheimer for 2023 background the Spaniard was already in talks in 2021 as a replacement to Vettel and Lance Stroll's desired driver despite being almost 41 the double world champion is still considered one of the best drivers in Formula 1 and he himself potentially unlike Vettel absolutely wants to continue I'll drive a few more years two or three more years if that's with Alpine fine if with another team that's fine too I'll find out about that probably start discussions here in the summer and of course that's the thing really with the whole Oscar Biastri situation the reigning Formula 2 champion is a test driver at Alpine considered a diamond in the rough Otmar saying from Alpine like um, you know there's no pressure to find him a seat but the pressure will certainly be there in July right people will be knocking on the draw trying to get uh, Piastri's services it seems like I mean he's very well prepared very ambitious and that's the thing if Alonso moves to Aston Martin Alpine would be free for Piastri but then of course Vettel might not have like a seat left right so that is certainly a really interesting possibility like if Alonso actually wants to do that go to Aston Martin in fairness right they did get double points in the last race like I think Vettel was eighth and Stroll was tenth so you know good performance all things considered there but like I'm um, you know still not exactly it seems like maybe a step backwards for Alonso if he wants to do this but look if he wants to keep driving then that might be the option if Alpine are saying look it's about time we give Piastri this seat and don't lend him elsewhere like um, it's a really interesting one especially because this from just a well a couple of weeks ago from Joe Sawards after the Imola Grand Prix he does these kind of like green notebook type things if you guys read them they're kind of interesting but um, he actually mentioned here that he believes all the signs in the paddock are that Fernando will soon sign a new two-year deal with Alpine so definitely conflicting reports here from what we've just read about and what was being said just after the Imola Grand Prix that uh, Fernando is going to stay with Alpine meaning he'll stay to the end of 2024 of course uh, Piastri is kind of sitting uncomfortably in the wings Fernando needs not only to perform but also to get support apparently he's just announced a personal sponsorship deal with Castrol Alpine's oil sponsor which makes it harder for Alpine to move him on clever move he says so Alpine definitely need to find Oscar Piastri a home whether that's going to be their own seat though that's another question so yeah definitely tweet your thoughts on this in the comment section below it seems unlikely but um you know maybe the story has changed for what Joe was hearing a couple of weeks ago and it also does kind of contradict what we've heard coming out of the Aston Martin camp because as a well Mike Crack says right here Aston Martin said it would be foolish for the team to not want to retain Vettel I've kind of said like we want to keep his services on like um you know if he wants to go or do something else then that's on him but like we're going to try and keep him involved which um of course would very much conflict with the notion that they're going to drop him in favor of Alonso but um you know who knows how things change and it will are continuing to change behind the scenes before we close the video I wanted to mention about McLaren real quick because of course well they pretty much start as back markers at the start of the season in Bahrain we looked a few days ago at this crazy graph of where they're pretty much two and a half seconds off the pace per lap of the leaders at the Bahrain Grand Prix that's come down every single race to like two seconds into 1.5 in Australia to pretty much one second off the pace in Imola right so if they continue on that pace they're soon going to be you know leader of the races but um you know whether that's a possibility that's how well seems rather unlikely but it would be good to see another team in the mix right? we we're kind of hoping this season could um you know in an ideal world be a four-way battle between Red Bull Ferrari McLaren and Mercedes so far it seems to be kind of a you know one two and then maybe three four but uh, you know Alpine are kind of on the heels as well and who knows how Haas can do as the investigation might well be going on there kind of a well sparked by Mercedes and McLaren into the relationship that Haas have with it with Ferrari and all that type of jazz but there was some talk actually about uh, well Lando Norris as a driver because the last few days people have been saying okay like George Russell Lewis Hamilton like who's the best British driver is it Lando Norris right now like he's had some phenomenal performances and um, even well Zach Brown of McLaren of course he's going to talk highly on his driver but he says like it's a case of when not if Norris gets his first win could have happened of course last year in Sochi unfortunate circumstances occurred towards the end of the race there but um yeah like it's well it's a matter of time whether it's even possible whether this car is capable even Helmut Marko a few days ago said that the only driver he thinks that's in the conversation with Verstappen and Leclerc in terms of pure skill is Lando Norris but right now he doesn't have the equipment to deliver the wins of course he signed a contract I believe until 2025 so well, 
was just certainly going to have to hope that McLaren do deliver the goods, but um, even these words from Lando Norris. Zach Brown says, he, in my opinion, is as good as anyone in Formula 1. Unbelievably fast. The part I'm most impressed with Lando is how few mistakes he makes, and his mistakes are very small and that. So, who knows what can happen this weekend. We're going to have, like, at least a couple of races, you'd imagine, this season where some chaos happens. To be fair, it already has. But, you know, we can imagine a situation where the Red Bulls and the Ferraris take each other out and throw themselves out of the race. And Norris, you know, it's Norris versus the Mercedes again for the victory at the checkered flag. And, yeah, just to mention this, this is, I believe, is the podium for this weekend. Like, um, it does look like a rather beautiful setting. So, looking forward to this weekend's Grand Prix. We're very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, as always. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you next time.